How do you make your no-code app uncopyable? At some point, you're going to have competition. There are going to be existing alternatives, other solutions out there. And frankly, you might be worried that they're going to overtake you. But today, we're going to talk about a strategy that makes those competitors irrelevant. What I'm talking about here is the blue ocean strategy. This is a strategy that focuses on differentiating yourself, your business, and your app instead of reacting to competitors. And it's a way for you to make growing your app and your business much easier, a lot more straightforward. And it's a way that will allow you to do it a lot more successfully. The blue ocean strategy teaches you how to create uncontested market space and make the competition irrelevant. If you haven't read this book yet, I suggest picking it up. It's really valuable, but we're going to go over it today and talk about how to follow a blue ocean strategy for yourself. We're also going to talk about how we've done it, and I'm going to go through examples of a strategy canvas, which is something you can create to differentiate yourself. Make sure you stick around to the end so that you can see how these strategy canvases are put together so you can extract your own value. First, if you're new around here, my name is Kristen. I'm the co-founder of Coach no code apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs launch their apps, launch their businesses, grow their businesses. No tech skills required. First, let's run through an overview of what blue ocean strategy even means in the first place. So you can see on the screen here, I have a split. We have one half of the screen red and one half of the screen is blue. So this over here is our blue ocean. And this over here is our red ocean. A lot of apps and businesses compete with each other on things that are very copyable features or pricing, even customer service, even size of product. And when you're competing on these things that are very copyable, it creates a reactive business where if you see another business doing one thing, then you react and maybe do that same thing as well, but a little bit different. And when everyone runs their businesses and competes in this way, what happens is a red ocean is created because there are so many players in this marketplace vying for their piece of the target market that it creates a red ocean full of blood. It's kind of like a battleground for who can get to the top. On the flip side, if you instead focus on differentiating your app and your business, then you create a blue ocean because you eliminate all of that battle, right? All of that bloodshed. We've talked before about how to differentiate your app and you should definitely check out that video above if you haven't already. But the gist is this. Most entrepreneurs who I talk to are thinking about competing on things that are very copyable, like we just went over. They're generally looking at features or just overall robustness of the app. A lot of times they're thinking, how can I pack more and more and more into my scope so that I can offer more value. They're thinking about price, they're thinking about other things that go outside of that, customer service, general customer interactions, maybe the way that they're marketing, things like that. But if you wanna be uncopyable, you've gotta do something different. That's where a blue ocean strategy canvas comes into play. So this is essentially a way to plot yourself or your app against your competitors or the alternative solutions that are currently in your market. Now, like I said, we're going to go over an example of our own strategy canvas that we use, but I want to talk through how to really think about even go into creating a strategy canvas in the first place. All right. So the very first thing I want you to do is think about the problem that you are aiming to solve for your target market. Now, when you picture this problem, I want you to think about everything involved in the problem. What are all the pain points that your target market is experiencing and what are all the consequences of those pain points? And then I want you to think about your customers or your users' needs and their desires as it relates to that problem, those pain points and consequences. What do they need in order to solve that problem? What you're going to do is essentially Put all the user needs down here at the bottom of what, what will become like an X, Y axis. I want you to find the holes in the 
current solutions your target market is using. So in other words, if your prospective users are currently using a different app or they're currently using a different solution, then how is that solution still not fully meeting their needs? Where are the holes in the solution? Where are the pain points that still exist? Or for the people who should be using that solution, so maybe we have a segment of the target market that needs the solution, they're just not using it yet, why not? What, what are the holes that that current solution isn't offering that those other users need and it's holding them back from not using it? Or for the segment of your target market that maybe was using an existing solution, but they weren't happy with it, so they're now looking around or they left that solution. Why? What are the holes? You're going to use those holes to essentially differentiate yourself from the rest of the market. So to create a strategy canvas, you're essentially going to take your app and you're going to take the existing alternative and you're going to plot points along this XY axis to show how the existing alternatives meet the customer needs and how you meet the customer needs. Now, what you want to see is a different plot line for yourself than for those existing alternatives. And that different plot line happens because you are filling holes that your existing alternative is not. It was a super quick rundown. So we're gonna go over an actual example and I'm gonna take you to our own strategy canvas. To give you a little bit of context, our target market generally has three options for building their no-code apps. Either they can outsource the development to a, an app development agency, so they can just hand everything off and the development can be done for them, or they can use things like courses or tutorials or boot camps where they essentially consume a bunch of information and then are left to DIY their app and implement that information on their own. Or they can take a done with you approach, which is what we have created and what we offer. Our strategy canvas focuses on those two types of existing alternatives. So we've taken a little bit different of a spin. And instead of comparing ourselves to one existing alternative that makes up most of the market, we're comparing ourselves to two existing alternatives because those two options are so prevalent. Let me take you over to both of our strategy canvases. The top one here is comparing coaching no-code apps to outsourced agencies. The bottom one is comparing coaching no-code apps to boot camps or that more DIY approach that I talked about. Let's start with the top one first. The very first thing we did is list out our prospective customer or client's needs, the price of building and launching an app, the speed it takes in order to build and launch an app, the actual app quality. So is the app going to be scalable? The client control, so the actual control a person has over their app throughout the process of development and afterwards, the one-on-one -on -one access a client gets to the person or the agency they're actually working with. So can they communicate with them? How often? How much? And the long-term results. So again, after they launch their apps or after they have that app developed, then what happens? So in knowing how agencies operate and what that means on the client side of things, we then decided to fill the holes in those offerings with our own done with you model, which in this case, it's our built to scale program. So you can see that each plot point along this line is where the differentiation happens. So we looked at the holes within the agency process and this is essentially how we landed on our own strategy canvas. And we're able to differentiate ourselves versus compete in that red bloody ocean. So first things first, we really wanted to enable more non-technical entrepreneurs to launch their apps and their businesses. And when you're outsourcing to an agency, the cost can be very prohibitive. We're talking about custom software development 
it's not cheap to get someone to do it for you. So by taking a program that's done with you instead of done for you, we handed off the development to our clients and we'll talk about how that benefits them a little bit down this plot line, but that was able to reduce the cost a lot for them too and essentially eliminate that barrier to entry for a lot of people. Keep in mind that this plot line isn't designed to make yourself just look better than the alternatives. It's designed to actually show the differentiation. So the next point we look at is speed because most people wanna launch their apps as quickly as possible. Now, when we take a different approach where our clients are building their apps, well, that means it's gonna take a little bit longer than an agency who builds apps all day, every day. So you can see on our plot line, the speed of developing the app is lower than an agency. Now, for some people that might look like a negative. So again, this isn't just to show how you're better, it's to show how you're different. You have app quality. Now, this is where we see pretty much an overlap. And this is based on our experience in building apps for people and teaching people how to build apps following our own methodology, processes, and strategies. And we can create that overlap because this isn't a DIY approach where they're left to do it on their own. It's a done with you approach where we help them through it. Now, what we found is that most people want control over their apps because when you're a non-technical entrepreneur and you have someone else build your app for you, then you are essentially handcuffed to that person for the entire lifetime of your app. Anytime you want to make a change, anytime you want to iterate, anytime there's a bug, you have to call up your developer, hope that they answer, and then rely on them to make the change for you. And that's a big negative to a lot of of people. And so we decided to differentiate ourselves drastically from that. So you can see on this point for client control with agencies, that's a lot lower, which makes sense. You're handing off the development to someone else. Uh, with our done with you approach, it's much higher. You're the one building the app. Of course, you're going to have control over it. Then we moved on to one-on-one -on -one access. This is where we also saw a really big hole. And again, this comes from personal experience in operating as a development agency. We found that a lot of people really craved that one-on-one -on -one access because when someone else is building their app, the, the client can often feel like they're in the dark and they just hope that everything is being done and coming to life as it should be. What usually happens is a project manager sends updates to a client and that client can ask questions, but doesn't really know what questions they even should be asking because they're just not fully ingrained into the process. And a lot of people don't like that. And so we wanted to change that. And with a done with you approach, we offer full access to us and to our team so that clients can be hands on the entire way and never feel like they're in the dark with their very own product and idea. And the other really big hole that that we saw was the long-term results. When you don't have that control, you don't have the one-on-one -on -one access to really get the information that you need. When you're essentially handcuffed to those developers and your long-term results, they rely on those developers. It can be really hard to move and move quickly and be agile when you don't have control over your app. So long-term, we would see a lot of people's apps just kind of fizzle out. But when you have that control over your app, you can control the future of your app. So the strategy canvas takes the big problem of building and launching an app. It takes the customer needs in order to solve that problem, which is the price point, the speed, the app quality, client control, one-on-one -on -one access, and long-term results in our situation. Obviously, your user needs will look different. And then it finds the holes and it plots out the existing alternatives or the other solutions out there and what they offer. And then it takes what you do and how you di differentiated yourself by filling the holes and it plots out your own path and puts you into that blue ocean. Here's the thing, we used to operate in a very much reactive way. Whenever we were first starting to grow our business and gain some traction, we would look at what everyone else around us was doing and we would try to compete based on that. But when you do that, you are essentially removing your focus on your own client, customer, user results, and instead focusing solely on what other people are doing without really knowing why they're doing those things. Putting yourself in that red ocean and operating in that way 
it creates an uphill battle for yourself and it removes those customer needs as your number one priority. So your product, your business as a whole doesn't reach up to its actual potential. By putting yourself in a blue ocean, you can essentially put blinders on and stop worrying what everyone else is doing. And instead, think about the results. Think about the holes that you can fill and the value that you can provide for your users. When you do that, you can put yourself in that blue ocean and actually evolve your business in the right way for yourself and for your customers. Go ahead and click on the video you see on the screen here that is going to take you much further into creating an uncopyable app.